In 1999, a Japanese scientist stood before the United States Congress. He revealed something his own country had quietly accepted for decades. But in America, his testimony was buried. The press ignored it. The documents disappeared. I am recommending to the uh, sick people or people who seek, and my associates are recommending every day with a hot, wet towel squeeze, scrubbing whole, whole bodies twice morning and night making blood circulation active so forth, and then… We found a rare recording of one of his presentations. It's raw, unpolished, and unsettling. And in it, he reveals the same truths that were silenced years ago. And remember, what you're about to see was recorded back in the 1980s. He knew far too much for those times. Energy, understanding of energy is understanding of body and spirit at one time. Same things. Okay? And understanding energy is, is the guide, guide for you, the guide of your life, including your physical manifestation and the spiritual manifestation. They told us the world is solid, that this table, floor, even your body is made of matter tiny particles locked together like bricks. But what if that's a lie? What if matter itself doesn't exist? These were the exact words of Dr. Michio Kushi, a Japanese scientist whose testimony shook the room, then vanished into silence. He claimed matter itself is not real, only energy flickering in and out like ghosts. If that's true, then your body, your mind, and even your food are not what you think they are. All our lives we've been taught the same thing. The physical world comes first, and the mind is nothing more than its shadow. But Kushi warned us, the real power isn't matter at all, it's energy. In order to know what is matter, they took the course of analysis. Analysis. Atom. Element. Further analyze. Electron, proton, various other pre-atomic particles. Further analyze electron. Then it came whether electron has unit inside or not lost. Electron is something or even though that they discover smaller unit than electron, which compose electron, that is something, mass of energy, mass of waves, and it's not solid at all, it's not the unit at all, constantly changing. In other words, matter is something like mass of energy which is constantly coming in, constantly go out, and matter changing to energy, energy changing to matter. But here's the difference. In the West, they lock this away in theories, equations, and lecture halls. But this man didn't. He looked people in the eye and said, this is real and it affects you. If you're just vibration, then your health isn't random. It's energy flowing or energy blocked. Words can change you. Thoughts can reshape you. Even your food isn't just calories. It's a signal, programming the field that makes you human. That's when the real danger begins. Because if reality is only waves, then nothing about your life is fixed. It can all be rewritten. Not by them, not by their machines, but by you. Kuji said cancer isn't what you think it is, not even depression. According to him, all of it, every illness you can name, comes down to one thing, energy that refuses to move. Life is meant to flow, breath, blood, thought, rushing like rivers. But when the river stalls, when energy gets stuck, it rots, it clots, and it becomes a sickness. According to Kushi, in the East, they've whispered this for thousands of years. They call it ki, or chi, or prana, different names, same hidden truth. When energy flows, there is life. When it doesn't, 
there's death. Three, four thousand years ago in oriental countries, already they did foresee, they did see. It. They use terminology, so-called qi. Chinese pronunciation qi, Korean pronunciation ji. And they think everything is key. For example, if you become sick, they call sickness is your key. Key is out of order, out of chaotic key, out of order. If you become mentally ill, craziness, they call ki become wrong, kichigai, or kyoki, or chaotic ki. By the way, this kyo is very interesting. This is the beast, beast mind, beast mind ki, energy. That's why their healers pressed needles into skin, brewed herbs and fire, or even fought with empty hands. Not to treat a symptom, but to shake loose the blockage. Then to supply that energy, or to reduce that energy, treatment goes. Method is like the television set has an antenna. The antenna pick up the energies, waves, and supplying the waves. Same way we use needles, put certain meridian, certain points be supplying energy, or using needles certain way and taking out excess energy, or by shirt massage. Wherever stagnated part making smooth, okay, making all active, or herb medicine, herb medicine, drinking tea, certain herbs, etc., using and energizing certain type of key energy, okay, and by that, cancelled out chaotic conditions. And using day-to-day -day food to make very balanced key activities, energy. That is the medicine of key, medicine of energies. But in the West, we were told another story. They said cancer was a mistake in your DNA, a chemical accident in the blood. And with every story, came the promise of a cure. Pills, injections, endless treatments that never seemed to end. Not once did they say that maybe it's energy trapped inside you. And the dangerous part is that if he's right, then health isn't something you buy, it's something you unblock. And you don't always need a hospital to do it. But if that truth got out, the system built on endless treatment would collapse. That's why he turned people's attention to hidden threats in daily life. Microwaves, cookings, right? Now discovered it's very dangerous for cancer, right? Scientifically, creating more cancer, right? So now same things, microwave, certain wavelengths is there, right? Now you eat that, you are affected, whole body, right? Influence to you, life or death matter. And the deeper he went, the darker the warnings became. They don't want you to know this, but words can kill, and words can heal. Every sound you speak leaves a mark, carving into the body like invisible fire. That's why some voices calm you instantly, while others make your chest tighten. And this too isn't random, it's vibrations. Same thing by words, you can alive people, you can kill people. Same thing by your own chantings or own talkings. You can alive yourself, you can kill yourself. Okay? And the same things 
if you talk to the plants, eh, you are words of love. Then plants become fresh. If you talk to the plants, words of curse, these plants become withered. Eh? Same thing to animals. Same thing to everyone. Then you can understand, body is, human manifestation is nothing but energy. Same thing, crowd is energy. Ancient traditions always guarded the secret. Hindus whispered mantras, Buddhists chanted sutras, Christians filled cathedrals with echoing hymns. And now, science is catching up. A sugar pill works if the doctor says the right words, a placebo. The same pill harms if he speaks fear, nocebo. Blood pressure changes, pain vanishes, and the body rewires itself. Not from the pill, but from the sound of belief. So if words shape health and reality, who is controlling the words shaping you? The media, the teachers, the politicians, the endless voices flooding your ears every day. Do you think they choose their words by accident? So words, speech, you have to choose very carefully. You have to speak only truth. You have to speak only real meanings. If you tell lie, if you tell the just delusional things, you yourself making chaos, as well as you make other people chaos. And if you curse others, then you yourself become unhappy, as well as she or he will be become unhappy. And words aren't the only chains. You bear the weight of histories you didn't choose. Now do you think your life is yours alone? Think again. Behind you stand shadows, 20, 30 of them, ancestors whose unfinished pain still grips your blood. This other delusion include also dead people's spirit, dead people's soul. Okay. Dead people's soul. Your parents, your late husband or wife, your grandparents children who died by cancer, by battlefield, by accident, etc. Whose thinkings still there in the vibrational world. Right? He is himself giving influencing you. Kushi explains their sickness, their fear, their tragedies are not buried in the past, but carried in you right now. It sounds like a myth, but modern research shatters the doubt. Children of Holocaust survivors still show the stress their parents endured. Grandchildren of famine victims inherit bodies that cling to calories, as if hunger still stalks them. Science calls it epigenetics. He called it haunting. And maybe you felt it yourself. The fear that doesn't belong to you. The burden you can't explain. The sickness that arrives without warning. What if those are not yours at all, but echoes of the dead demanding to be seen? There's a hidden order no one ever told you about, a ladder of being. At the bottom is the beast with pure appetite, fear, instinct. Above that, the slave, a person who obeys and never questions. Then comes the ordinary man. He thinks he's free, but every step he takes has already been decided for him. But it doesn't stop there. The wise exist, the saints too. People worship them, yet even they aren't at the top. Because above all of them is the free man, the one who breaks every chain, the one no system can touch, and the one who represents the universe truly. Saint is still antagonistic to the people who are not saints. You know, he is representing virtue, he is representing holy, the idea, but he is antagonistic to those people. But Freeman embraces bad points, good points, everything, front and back. Okay? Embrace everything. 
not representing only virtue, beautiful one, but represent good points, bad points, front and back, everything represent like the universe. Rima. But the real question is, why was this hierarchy hidden? Maybe because if you knew most people lived trapped as beasts, slaves, and ordinaries, you'd start asking who put them there. And if people realized there was something higher than even a saint, maybe society itself would collapse. And these chains don't stop at the mind. They reach straight into your stomach. Food isn't just food. It's code. Every bite writes something into you. That's what Kushi said. Eat chicken, you carry its nervous twitch, its restlessness. Eat pig, you take on its heaviest, its dullness. You become what you swallow. And most of us never even notice. It happens nutritionally also sound and balanced. But primary purpose, primary view is energy. That means we deal food not only nutritionally, physical nutritional things, but we are dealing food as a spiritual energy source. Right? Source giving spirit nourish spirit in the form of energies. When you eat chicken, then become chicken, right? All arthritis people are belonging here, beast. Right? Many cancer people belonging here also. Right? When you eat food, which last short time, your life is short. When you eat long, the long time keeping food, huh? alive in food, alive food long time, then your life long. Why we use heavy cover when we grain, cook the grains? We are keeping energies, all go that heavy energies going towards the grain surface, energizing that. So eating yourself, you energize it. And then science, without meaning to, backed it up. Plant-rich diets are linked to longer life and clearer minds. Meat-heavy diets are tied to clogged hearts and inflamed bodies. Doctors explain it with cholesterol and inflammation. He explained it with energy. Same conclusion, only in a different language. So if food rewrites you from the inside out, who decides what fills your plate? Because the menu was never yours to choose. Maybe it was written by the same hands that silence voices. In 1999, the truth was spoken in front of Congress. The most powerful government on earth heard the words, and then acted like it never happened. If matter is vibration, then your body is broadcasting with every choice, every word, every meal. If illness is blocked energy, then health isn't in bottles, it's in the flow. And if food is programming, then your plate has been the battlefield all along. That's why once you see it, nothing looks ordinary anymore. His final words were simple and terrifying. Matter isn't real. What you touch, what you see, what you think is solid, it's nothing but vibration. And if that's true, then the ground beneath your life is gone. And maybe now you see why his testimony had to vanish. Because of ordinary people, if you knew that reality itself could be rewritten from the inside out, the entire machine would crack. Medicine, industry, and power. Because they only survive if you believe you are powerless. The only question left is that now that the secret is in your hands, will you use it? Or will you let them bury it again?